Folks, hello and welcome to the Tavern Chat podcast slash, I don't know, vidcast. I guess one and the same. Uh, I am having my first proper 12 in over 12 months. So, cheers. Mm. Nice. All right, so I got... The voicemail, the missing voicemail from the other day. And it's a good one. And I am going to, as I respond to it, make a statement that's probably going to uh, upset some of the listeners, some of the viewers. But that's okay. Because if you think about it, I'm probably right. Even if you don't want to admit to it. So, let's, let's go to the audio tape. Hey Eric, it's Angus D from North Carolina. I left a message the other day, but it didn't go through. Uh, first off, I love the podcast. I enjoy the long form discussions that you have with Bad Mike, and Joe the lawyer, and, and your recurring lineup of guests. And, and thank you. And listen, I'll be honest with you with Bad Mike, Joe, Glenn, all the guests. They they make this uh, podcast, this vidcast, what it is. I I. I I'm better for the people I work with. So thank you, and I'm sure they thank you too. And uh, it doesn't hurt that, again, I've known Joe for years. I've uh, podcasted with Glenn for years. And I've worked game tables at conventions and even shared a hotel room one year with Bad Mike. So, you know, we've all got good chemistry. I was calling in response to your uh, recent discussion about DMing and 5e and the art of being a DM. I'm a year younger than you are and came up with Holmes basic set and 1e and the Mulvig cookbox and we kind of hybridized all this stuff. We were in middle school and high school and we just like the elements of each and it worked for us. <clears throat> and I think that's what a lot of people did. I didn't. Uh, I, I came in with AD&D. You know, I kind of uh, grew on the uh, assumption that uh, basic was for babies. Um, I'm 13, you only play advanced, but it was bullshit. But things you know as an adult, you don't necessarily know when you're younger. And I think at the core of D&D is the ability to homebrew, and so I can relate to a lot of your stories. And Although I had a longer break than you from the game, I got back into the game when my kids were in elementary school. And we still keep a gaming group, even though they're in high school and my oldest is about to graduate. So I'm calling because I can relate to your frustration with versions beyond 1E. I never played 2E. And when I finally got around to playing again, 3 slash 3 5 was nearing its end and 4 was E was ascending. See, so yeah, I played pretty much the, uh, the, the ascendance of 2E. I, 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 I took my break from like 97 to. 2007, 2008. So my 3E years were mm, collecting, reading. I, my, well, my 4E years of that too, for the most part. But here's the controversial statement, and it's not about 4E. All right. And I'm sure that 4, 4E has its redeeming factors. I'm, I'm sure. I don't know who they are. But uh, I, I'm going to assert, and some of you might say I'm full of shit, but I am going to assert that uh, 3E is probably the most important version of Dungeons & Dragons ever released. Hey, all right. Maybe the original box set comes close. Maybe they tie. Okay. But third edition made the game that we play now, whether that's 5e, uh, whether that is an OSR rule set or DCC RPG or Castles of Crusades, you know, Labyrinth Lords, Swords and Wizardry, Astonishing Swordsman, Swords of Hyperborea, all these game sets and more, basic art, basic role playing. A basic fantasy RPG, I should say. Any of these games, right? They wouldn't exist 
without the OGL, the Open Game License. Screw the D20 license. We don't. That, that was never needed. That was just an attempt by Wizards of the Coast to put the genie back in the bottle to some extent. And the game system license with 4E was total booger. But uh, third edition gave us the OGL. If you think about the options you have for play these days, that's because third edition. You can't. You can't. What if you say, "Oh, third edition was too much crunch," and "Oh, third edition uh, the seeds it, it, it turned the game into superheroes." And you know, it, it, not can argue those points. It's still the most influential, most important edition of D and D. More so than even Five E, because even Five E was like, "Oh, I guess we, if we want to be relevant, we got to uh, <laughs> we got to open up to the OGL." Right, they, they fourth edition the game system license wasn't shit. So a little tangent there, but I, I had to assert that. I'd love to hear other opinions. So uh, we're gonna go back to Angus's uh, voicemail in a second. But if you have other opinions, folks, if you if if, if you want to, uh, well, not really fight the ten car, but if you if you want to verbally spar with the ten car. Uh, three four seven five zero nine five one six eight. Three four seven five zero nine five one six eight. Why five one six eight? That was my shield number when I was a sergeant. I happened I, when I was looking for a Google number. I couldn't believe that that was like, oh, I got that option. So there you go. All right, back to Angus. Thankfully, I had a friend who stayed in the game and let me know about Osric and Basic Fantasy, and we've been playing that for about a dozen years. But recently, we've kind of branched out, and I bought the 5e set. And that almost sounds like a confession. But I have the I have the, the, the starter set. I have Essentials. I have, uh, God, the uh, two other starter sets. The, was it the Rick and Morty and the uh, Stranger Things? Hey, uh, I've opened them up, so I guess they aren't collectible, right? They're out of the shrink wrap. And I have the core books and some of the early adventure books. Never really read through them. It's still so rules heavy and crazy, and I don't really uh, get it all. Um, but my kids love it, and it's actually forced me to go back and look at three, three and a half, four e again. And I got to say, I like some ideas that are in all of them, even though. And those ideas in those three, three X, four E, um, yeah, they got recycled in five E. They got refined. Five E is a fine system, not the system that I want to play. Certainly not one I want to run, but it's a fine system. Would I, with the right DM, would I uh, play? Sure, but I'd probably rather play a hack of five like Miss Arthur, which is uh, more my my power level but powered down, I guess. Oh, the gameplay drives me crazy. Um, and I was able to pick up some used copies on the cheap from a local gaming store, which always helps. So when I heard you guys on the other day, radio the other day, um, I was thinking about who they're marketing to, and I realized. Uh, I heard something on the radio basically talking about 18 to 39 as some critical demographic. In 18 to 39. Now, just as an aside, and we're going to do this real quick. Doing this, not live because I'm recording this, but looking at demographics for, I don't know, the podcast. Um, what is the age group that the podcast is in? Well, the largest age group is. 45 to 59, and that's 58%. And the next largest was 35 to 44. So 58 and 25 would be 83%. So four out of five, more than four to five of my listeners, at least on the podcast side, according to Spotify's numbers, um, are 35 to 59. Right? So... Yeah, my, my demographic doesn't quite line up with uh, the demographic that is uh, 
being sought after by Wizards of the Coast? Well, we're on the outs. <laughs> they, the, that group has the expendable cash, and um, anyway, it, it's it, it, I I've come to peace with it. People like what they like, and and get out and game and be social, and that's all I care about. Um, so I'm going to shirk my grognard tendencies to see if they uh, and and let my kids do what they like. And I'm just grateful they enjoy the rules light games we play now. And we're going to start a new one called um, the Ultraviolet Grasslands in the Black City soon. Uh, I've heard that is very good. I, I'd love to hear uh, more feedback on that one because uh, I always love, I, I like good settings. Rule sets are always fine, but let's be honest. One OSR rule set is pretty close to the other. It's the settings that differentiate them, the uh, base assumptions. So, yeah, Ultraviolet Grasslands, I've heard good stuff. I need to check it out. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a weird rules, light RPG inspired by the heavy metal era of comics. They even quote Blue Oyster Cult. So I guess being a grognard is not all that bad. Roll those dice and keep doing what you're doing. Love the show. Peace. Angus, thank you for calling, really. And uh, I must say, I'm enjoying, uh, for those folks that are, are listening on the podcast side, the ability to record and listen to the voicemails and interact with them, I think, takes the voicemails to another level. So uh, this is this is huge, and I really appreciate not just the voicemails, but uh, the ability of StreamYard to allow me to do this, uh, record for YouTube, put up on the podcast. I, I think it's working great. Uh, I, I don't know if I will be able to do the same kind of setup at, at conventions when I record from conventions. It might have to get reversed back the way it was for those limited times, or maybe not. Maybe maybe I'll be able to do the same thing. I don't think I'll be drinking my. Proper 12. And uh, just, uh, see, I don't know if the screen's going to pick this up properly. That, uh, it doesn't really pick it up. But in any case, the, uh, the glass I'm using for my Proper 12 whiskey is an NYPD SBA, so it's a middle association glass. Um, so... I know I have a few listeners that are retired from the job. So, folks, God bless. This sip is for you. Um, as always, folks, I am not a medical professional. I make no uh, illusions to do so. However, I did get my second Pfizer shot today. And... Uh, it actually burned a little bit afterwards, and then I came home and I had to take a nap because I'm an old fucking man. But that being said, use your common sense when it comes to uh, the world of COVID. All right, you have to take actions that keep yourself safe. If you don't keep yourself safe, you can't keep your friends, your loved ones, your family, your community safe. All right. I'm not telling you what to do. You know the risk factors that you face. You know the risk factors that your community faces. Take that into account. That's all I'm saying. Um, other than that, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice and roll them well. Um, let's see. Tomorrow night, it's uh, myself. Bed Mike and I believe Courtney Campbell will be our, our guest tomorrow. Probably should reach out to Courtney and remind him. And uh, Friday night will be another live stream, also at 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, myself and Glenn Hallstrom. Saturday night at 8 o'clock will be Rach. My wife and myself doing gamers health. You know, it's just a it's a plethora. It's a plethora of uh, live streams, podcasts, and vidcasts. All for you. All right, folks. Two thumbs up. Knock on wood. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with Bad Mike and Courtney. All right, folks. Later.